Hello and welcome to a mini episode of the Trilogy of Terror podcast. This is where I put any extra bits that wouldn't fit into the main show. Episode 1 was all about Lamberto Bava and I discussed his films Macabre, Demons and Delirium Photos of Joya. Here are some additional comments on one more of his movies, Demons 2. Hope you enjoy it and if you want to hear more of my thoughts on other horror directors and their films, subscribe to the Trilogy of Terror podcast and don't forget to like the Facebook page seeing as you're here already. Demons 2 from 1986 A horror movie about demons is screening on the television sets in a modern apartment building. Teenager Sally gets the birthday surprise of her life when one of these monsters pops out into the real world and she becomes a bloodthirsty demon. With the power cut off, the building's high-tech security systems imprison the inhabitants inside the building and as the possession spreads, the survivors find themselves fighting for their lives. Rather than a continuation of Demons, Demons 2 is almost a retelling of the same story, but in a different setting. It retains the fast pace of the original and adds a few new elements, for example the acidic demon blood burning through the floor or ceiling in an aliens-type way as a further source of infection. Like its predecessor, it uses a strong soundtrack very well, though it's more pop or new wave than rock and heavy metal this time round, which is perhaps more in keeping with some of the laugh-out-loud 80s fashion and dancing at Sally's birthday party. The gore is less in-your-face than the first film, and although the special effects are far from terrible, they don't seem quite as effective this time round. The squealing baby demon, for example, is hard to take seriously, and it looks more like a comedy version of a gremlin puppet. It's actually more cute than terrifying. Having said that, the film still manages to include some scares. The film within a film sequences are wonderfully tense and atmospheric, and I found them genuinely frightening. The characters watching it on their television certainly seem entranced, and I'm surprised I've not heard a fan conspiracy theory that they could have simply been hypnotised by the movie into committing the acts of violence rather than there being a genuine demonic infestation. Oh, well, just a thought. The biggest difference between this and the previous film is the cheese factor, which is considerably higher in Demons 2. There is a doggy demon, a surprisingly clean and nifty childbirth, a gym full of people in amusingly inappropriate fitness outfits, and the homoerotic inclusion of many bare male torsos throughout, each lovingly smeared with baby oil. And remember, if your beefy gym instructor can't kick down a security door, you can always try chucking flower pots at it. There are also some interesting similarities between the two movies. As well as the similar settings, the claustrophobia of being trapped in a building, they both feature the birth of a demon from a body of a human, a blind or blinded character, a handsome hero named George, a German location, and the even share actors. Tony the Pimp reappears as Hank the gym instructor and Ripper the coke snorting punk returns as the apartment security guard. I totally enjoyed Demons 2. It's a combination of gross out gore, atmospheric horror and campy unintentional comedy that really appeals to me. I thought it was a lot of fun and definitely one to watch with a group of friends. Anyway, that's all for now. If you'd like to get in touch, you can email me at trilogypodcast at gmail.com or follow me on Twitter at IamGoreBlimey. Thanks to Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com for the theme music, The Show Must Be Go, and special thanks to you for listening.